is the principal means by which enemy locations and activities are detected. Ground level and aerial surveillance is aimed at acquiring continuous, systematic, coordinated and timely information to support tactical ground operations. Surveillance involves maintaining a continuous watch over the battlefield. Like reconnaissance, which seeks out information on the enemy and on the ground, and target acquisition, which fixes the enemy, surveillance contributes to the development of the intelligence picture and provides a degree of battlefield security. In most cases, the surveillance plan will not require redeployment of forces. Surveillance responsibilities are based on a commander's area of influence. Commanders will rely on formations, units, or their flanks, and on their next superior commander for surveillance and warning out to their area of interest. Special attention must be paid at all levels to ensure no gaps appear either between boundaries or within their rear areas, and that all high-speed enemy approaches are covered. The combat surveillance system strives to make the most economical use of command and control procedures, equipment and personnel. It integrates intelligence gathering, security, deception, reconnaissance, surveillance and target acquisition plans and activities and supports the combat intelligence system. The combat surveillance system aims at providing essential combat information to commanders to allow them sufficient time to react. The combat surveillance system incorporates an ADP capability to handle and quickly process the high volume of information received from surveillance, reconnaissance and target acquisition sources. It produces hard intelligence, allowing for the exploitation of situations and targets. In addition, essential information is presented in a format that provides the commander with as much advanced threat warning as possible. In view of the nature of the information required, the activities of the combat surveillance system are grouped into area surveillance, reconnaissance in depth, reconnaissance and surveillance to line of sight, and target acquisition. Area surveillance provides up-to-date ground information on enemy deployments and activities and cues reconnaissance, surveillance, and target acquisition resources to provide detailed information. It also provides early warning and assists with the targeting of electronic warfare and indirect fire assets. Reconnaissance in depth provides detailed ground information beyond line of sight. It identifies the composition and locations of enemy forces, provides early warning, updates tactical information and acquires targets for air and ground-based indirect fire weapon systems. Reconnaissance and surveillance to line of sight satisfies the requirement for detailed combat information and overlaps with the target acquisition function. Specialized target acquisition activities for direct and indirect fire weapons enables enemy assets to be identified and accurately located or fixed in sufficient detail to permit immediate attack or to orient or cue other acquisition systems or intelligence gathering assets. The system makes the most efficient use of all available sources to collect information. These include non-specialized units which incorporate a variety of weapon sites, laser rangefinders, night vision aids, and specialized organizations such as reconnaissance, target acquisition, observation, and electronic warfare units and subunits belonging to the division and certain core collectors and air defense assets. Advice, planning, and management of combat surveillance resources and agencies is carried out by the G2 staff and the Intelligence Collection and Analysis Center. The control of troops the establishment of surveillance and target acquisition priorities, as well as the tasking and coordination of combat surveillance entities, are the responsibility of the G3 staff. The goal of managing combat surveillance resources is to ensure effective use of a limited number of assets against a large target array of enemy movers, shooters, 
sitters, and emitters. Planning for the combat surveillance system originates from estimates produced by the intelligence and operations staffs. These estimates eventually evolve into the Surveillance and Target Acquisition Annex and the Intelligence Annex to the Formation Operations Order. The Surveillance and Target Acquisition Plan is developed in concert with the needs of the Intelligence Collection Plan. It covers the employment of patrols, ground and air observation posts, listening posts, weapon locating radars, remotely piloted vehicles, electronic warfare intercept and direction finding devices, ground sensor systems, night illumination devices, and a variety of other systems and equipments which operate throughout the entire core area. It also details the emission control policy and the area of surveillance responsibility for the subordinate formations and units. In addition, this plan provides guidance to its subordinates and allows them to increase the degree of surveillance at certain times and at certain locations, depending on foreseen levels of enemy activity. The plan also provides combat information to meet the commander's critical intelligence requirements. The STA plan starts as an annex to the core operations order. The plan is refined downwards with division and brigade headquarters allocating resources and coordinating plans and activities and with units implementing tasks within their specific area of responsibility. The process is never-ending and is continually adjusted, updated or modified to meet specific needs. The plan aims at providing timely information to the level of command that can react, retaliate, attack, or otherwise take action. The plan takes into account deception, communications, anti-armor, patrol, electronic warfare, fire support, and other ongoing plans and activities. At division level, the ICAC, on behalf of the G2 staff, coordinates the integral intelligence collection assets, whether they be allocated to reconnaissance, surveillance, or target acquisition missions. Each level of command is responsible for the collection of information within its area of responsibility. The planning process takes into account the need to constitute a separate surveillance force, areas or locations which require particular surveillance, information provided by higher and adjacent formations, the use of deception to disguise surveillance activities, the allocation of resources, and the core and division's emission control policies which normally impose restrictions on the use of radars, active infrared sensors, and white light so that the enemy will not be provided with information on our defensive layout. The battle group commander formulates his surveillance and target acquisition plan within the framework of the brigade plan. It integrates all battalion surveillance resources as well as those of any attached organizations. The plan sets down control measures for active systems and white light operations and details any special communications requirements. Control of all surveillance activities is normally held at the highest possible level, with command being decentralized to the units or subunits which operate the devices and have the means to react. At unit level, the intelligence officer coordinates surveillance activities throughout its area from the rear boundary out to its area of influence. He also makes recommendations for deployment of STA assets to ensure maximum continuous coverage. He maintains the unit surveillance map which shows the location of the battalion's elements, surveillance equipment, OPs and standing patrols including their arcs of possible coverage as well as dead ground and gaps, and the task of each deployed collector.
adjacent units coverage of the unit area, limited visibility or night restrictions. Patrol routes and coverage by other collectors such as artillery OPs and vehicle or helicopter patrols. Communications are the key to effective surveillance operations. They are required for the passage of advance information concerning enemy concentration and movement, for early warning and for illumination requests. Transmission means include combat net radio, data link systems, and field phones. Net radio traffic dealing with surveillance activities may be carried on the unit command net, but could also be carried on a special surveillance net linking all observation posts, radars, patrols, and the like. A typical surveillance scenario might involve an OP maintaining watch over a portion of an important approach or route. The OP would be sighted for the maximum range of visibility in daylight. At night, the observer can extend the range of his night vision and would be assisted by remote sensors and flares. Any indication of activity would see the observer triggering active sensors and requesting illumination. Once the significance of a contact is confirmed, more vulnerable and sophisticated means of gathering information may be called upon such as active patrolling or an air reconnaissance mission. In addition, the target could be attacked by fast air, artillery, EW or other assets, including direct fire weapons. RPVs can be used to monitor the target reaction and provide information for post-strike analysis. Moving northeast, heading at northeast. Battlefield surveillance and target acquisition resources generally include ground and air observation posts, patrols, stay behind parties, reconnaissance troops, fire controllers and artillery OP parties. These personnel generally use viewing devices to improve their observation in bad light and at night. They also use warning devices, which attract their attention to areas outside their arc of direct observation. Individual weapon sites for use at night and in conditions of poor visibility. White light from searchlights, flares or shells, which improves night viewing conditions. Weapons locating radars and surveillance radars, which can detect moving targets and distinguish between men and vehicles. Sensors which warn of intruders in dead ground. RPVs and drones, which provide reconnaissance and target acquisition information. Electronic warfare devices, which can detect, locate, and provide information from enemy transmissions. And sound ranging equipment, which can locate enemy guns. Counter surveillance activities include ways by which the defender can seek to avoid detection. These involve avoiding the enemy's routine areas of surveillance. The effective use of camouflage keeping movement to a minimum, using deception, and treating night as day and using the same countermeasures at all times. A well-managed combat surveillance system will go a long way in providing the required combat information and intelligence needed for the planning and conduct of operations. A vital step in meeting this need is the ongoing process involved in surveillance and target acquisition planning.